<laughs> Athena Station, low Earth orbit, 2159. Welcome to Athena Station. We have a mission that needs your immediate attention. It appears a module in our comms array by the moon is malfunctioning. We're not expecting any communications. This will serve as the perfect opportunity to go over some basic training. We need you to go and retrieve the module, repair it on your ship, and deposit it back into the comms array. Okay. So, hi everyone, this is me, I'm Kinka Jow, and we are playing some Space Crew. Now, I want to apologize to start off with here now, man, it is extremely loud. Um, and there's no way to actually skip the tutorial, you do have to go through this, so let me go ahead. Oh, there we go, we need to get the music volume down. Effects can be pretty loud as well. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. but you can, you know, like, you got your crew details, how to play, controls, uh, wish I could skip the tutorial, but I can't, I've kind of already started playing this because I wanted to make sure everything ran, but let's go ahead and get our captain, gotta launch our solar justice ship, that's the name of our ship, it actually looks really cool, alright, now we can deselect by right clicking, and we gotta zoom, Look at that. Okay. Rotate the camera. We gotta rotate it. Alright. And now we gotta tag the jump gate, which is over here. Oh, yeah, I forgot I clicked that. And then you can hit tab to speed up when you're in an area where much there is no enemies, which is where we're at right now. But yeah, no, um, Space Crew. It is the game by Runner Duck. It is the after game of Bomber Crew, which if you don't know what Bomber Crew is, it's definitely one to go look at. Um, I actually really enjoy Bomber Crew. Um, I thought about playing it on my channel, but then I saw this one coming out, so I figured, hey, let's go ahead and play this one. If this one, you know, is liked, we'll definitely jump back over to Bomber Crew, because that one is fun as well. Uh, on your scanner is picking up plasma activities. So sure to make sure to look at all marks to systems. Okay. Select your engineer, get him over into the gun turret, and then it's going to have me select Morris here. And have them get into this guy. Woohoo! There we go. Okay. There we go. Mark them. And then mark them as well. Kind of just gotta wait at this moment in time. Well, this is actually a very fun game. I already killed one. Blew him up. I'll try to watch the action. Alright. Upper shield restored. Okay. And you can see down here in the bottom left we've got what, uh, it'll explain it a little bit later, um, but we have the shield and health of the spacecraft that we're in. Upper, lower, front, and back. Good work, we took care of them. We need to go over to the communications array, which then I need to get my uh, engineer over to the tractor beam. This is a nice, uh, interesting feature just where we actually have to pull them off. We gotta wait for alignment. Um, the bar below our ship health, back down to it, is this reactor here, um, where our engineer, this is our engineer bay. Um, it'll explain it a little bit later, but you actually have power you've got to manage throughout your ship, and certain, like, you know, weapons can take more power or less power. Um, you actually can control the gravity on your ship, like, you can take gravity, take gravity off your ship, and then have an extra power slot for weapons to have increased accuracy, or for shields to recharge faster. Um, it's definitely interesting, because, like, I was like, you know, I really don't need gravity, let me just boost my weapons or my shields. No, gravity is actually extremely useful um, because if you need to have your crew members run around the ship or um, take care of a fire, um, you're going to want them to have that gravity because they're moving normally without it. They'll float 
and they'll be rather slow while floating. Let me accelerate the time here, get this repaired as fast as possible. Thank you, buddy. Now come back here. Deposit it. That's nice and fast, and now... Oops, I keep hitting that button, I don't know why. Um, so control is a slow time feature. From what I've seen, there isn't really a, a downside to using it. Um, but yeah. Mm, just gotta charge this. And it's gonna come in to notice that in order for you to do these chumps, you notice that I've got all these like, oh, power's out, power's out, but then power's back on. Let's get you back into here. And then let's go dock. Get over there. So whenever you do a jump, it takes four power to jump. And as such, there's already four power in use. One for gravity, one for weapons, one for shields, and then one for the engines. And once you use that, you no longer have any power to do anything until the jump is activated and you jump. Um, doo -doo -doo, crumbs are very repaired. This is a nice feature, so um, I haven't played Bomber Crew in a long time. I don't know if this is, they, added, they finally added this in, but they added in a fast forward button, so like in this case, you don't have to wait for them. Oh, they all these all these people returned. Here's the experience they got. You can hit this and, just, and it goes through real fast, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, Here's the mess hall. Uh, two years since the first hostile uh, phasmid activity leading to the United Defense Force, which is what these guys are. Uh, gonna jump up here over to uh, missions, which I need to give her a different voice because I originally gave her a man's voice and I do apologize about that, but I'm not good at voices, so. This is the mission briefing room. Select a mission for your crew. Let us go on a mission. Uh, simple, just clear out the enemies there. Let's keep going. Although this is a real combat mission, there are a few features to your sh of your ship that we will need to try out. At some points in this mission, some control of your ship and crew will be locked for training purposes. So let's select you. Let's get launched. Nice little cinematics for actually launching the ship. Oop. So we need to go to Mars. Let's go to Mars. Charge the jump drive. As you notice, my ship just all suddenly stops. It has no power to anything. And so it's fully ready to charge. Okay, before we have a jump, let's run through how your ship's reactor works. This is how it's gonna explain that. Um, select my engineer, you can see here. Um, the engineer station panel from here, you can modify reactor output to the ship's different systems, shields, weapons, engines, and gravity generator. Um, while charging for the hyperdrive, units of power will be diverted and locked to the engines. So it's actually taking the power from everything else and putting it in the engines. We only have four power. One was already in there, so it took one from the weapons, one from the shields, and one from gravity. Let me I want to clarify that. Um, so it's only four, but you can upgrade the reactor to have later, so that way you can have like shields and weapons on, gravity maybe even included, um, which will be nice. This is a very FTL element in that case, in my opinion, how it is, because you got to in FTL you got to manage power your ship. That's another good game. I should play that one as well. Um, and so our energy weapons over here, the front two, the back gun and the front gun, these are energy based. They do not have power. Now this guy, I can't really show it. Oh, I can show it here. He is, isn't showing that icon. He is using a ballistic-based weapon. He doesn't have to go get ammo, he doesn't have to reload, but it'll shoot ballistic-based bullets, so that means he doesn't have to worry about power being off. So if I were to go, say, in, at one point you can actually upgrade your ship, if I were to uh, get rid of this uh, energy turret and this energy turret and just have ballistic-based weapons, I could technically take that extra power from weapons, put it into shields, and I'd only have ballistic. Now the problem is ballistic weapons aren't that great against actual shields. Um, but anyway, it's also notating here is the gravity generator, and here is the shield generator. Uh, or shield recharger. Generator is a better term for it. Um, but after we complete the hyper jump, reactor power does return back to its normal position. So if I had one in here, one in here, and one in here, and then one in here, it's going to put one, 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 and one. If let's say I had no gravity and I had one, two, one, it's going to do one, two, one. Okay. But anyway, let's go ahead and jump. 
And if you're wondering how I'm going through and switching to people um, very fast without having to click on their image over here or click on them, um, it's one, two, three, four, five, six on the numpad. So let's get my engineer, remove the gravity. So gravity is now off. It's not going to have me. Ugh. Sorry. Late at night. Let's go ahead and put it into weapons. <clears throat> So, energy weapons, E plies require power in order to operate. They are more effective with more power. Non energy weapons, auto cannons do not require any further power. Select like your security officer. Tell them to move over to this gun, which I don't know why you'd want them to come all the way over to this gun, but they. You, see, they are like, oh, look, I can't really. I can't, I can't do this. I, it, it's difficult. Enemies incoming. Uh, full crew control to your ship returned. Set your reactor power to your preference and move your crew to your stations as needed. Let's go ahead and do this. Turn gravity back on. And then we're going to turn gravity off and put it into weapons and get you over to this side. This is normally how I operate it in this case, but let's go ahead and mark these. I do love how fast it'll mark uh, enemies. Um, it does get a little bit annoying that this is also red and flashing and then these guys pop up as a little red exclamation point. Um, it tends to make it a little bit difficult actually pinpointing and locking them down. Um, because you'd be like, oh, I'm not really paying attention to this because I don't need to. And then these guys pop up with little red exclamation points. But as you can see, if I come here, he has aim accuracy of 30%, weapon effectiveness 105. If I click on you, who has the power boost, his weapon increases by 115%. He has an increased aim accuracy of 46% because he has... Um, he's an actual gunner, same as this person. Better accuracy, less effectiveness. So, actually boosting weapons on a ballistic weapon doesn't matter. If I were to send him back in here and put the gra energy towards a shield, the shields are going to recharge faster, um, which can be a very effective way of doing that. I'm not sure uh, if there's some enemies around. I really wish my pilot had more. I can't wait until he gets level 2. Um, it definitely helps out when they get to level 2, so they are all taken care of. Let's get going over to here. It's like my engineer, get you back in here. It's like my security officer, get you back in here. Sometimes it's just easier to click on them and move them, in my opinion. But, yeah, I'm probably going to plan on probably doing a playthrough of this. Um, right now, we have... Um, non-name characters. I'm more than happy to name characters off of subscribers. Um, to, yeah, subscribers here on my end. Let's charge that up. Get that going. Um, and just for my testing, I have also noticed, because um, I wanted to test it in one of my combats, because it was actually a very, very dicey combat. I really did not want to be in it anymore. Uh, let's get the gravity back up. Let's get the gravity off and put it on shields, and that was a very bad way of handling it. Let's get these guys up, mark those ones. Now my shield should be a little bit better um, rather than my um, weapons, because really the only things that will be affected by my weapons are my back turret and my front turret, which honestly I need to get you up here. Because the ballistic turrets are the ones that are actually doing damage to the ships when they lose their uh, shields. Uh, in which you need the energy weapon to destroy and damage shields. So. Mark those. Um, you can enter in it in and out of the targeting you can, uh, on with space or middle mouse click. I like space. Um, another thing I noticed in experience is when you're in it, this is your like movement speed. When you're out of it, this is your movement speed. I like definitely aiming outside of it, so I have that increased movement speed, and then I can just look at it, hit space, and there we go, I've locked onto it. Um, one of the things I do wish they had in this, which is the same issue they had in the first one, Bomber crew 
is you can tell your gunners to focus once they hit level 2, but that just means they're more accurate when they shoot. They have like 100% accuracy. What I wish I could tell my gunners to do is say um, there was a really heavy armored fighter. You notice that there was those big ships that just parked up right next to me. I wish I could tell all my weapons specialists to target that one rather than, oh, say, the little fighters that are clear out here, which really aren't going to be that much of a problem. Um, I think that's all the enemies. Yep, and now we can return back to base. Let's go ahead and mark Mars. Accelerate the speed. <sighs> Sorry about the yawn. I really don't have anything, you know, pressing, so there's no point in moving my guys around. Um, security offer is perfectly fine sitting in that turret rather than her seat. Um, but security officer is definitely one that you want to keep putting back onto the seat. Um... In general, the engineer is the only one that has the most flexibility of getting in out of their seat to go to a gun turret. Um, you definitely don't really want to move the two gunners. Because um, they're just nice to have. And their position... This is the only one that can probably, in my opinion, really move to this turret over here. Because um, the engineer can, can jump down here. And I was sitting here waiting to charge for a while. But it makes no sense to have him jump on the front turret with an energy turret. Because you're just going to run into problems there at that point. So let's go ahead. We'll explain a little about your captain's piloting modes. So this is where they're going to tell me about captain piloting's mode. On the control panel, you can select your current piloting mode. So it says waypoint locked. I can't select any of them right now because this is going to go through a tutorial. And it's like, oh, currently the jump gate waypoint has been tagged. You can see the waypoint is locked. Is highlighted. Try canceling this waypoint. In order to do that, I need to click on patrol. Um, um, so press patrol. It is now going to. Uh, it's untagged that waypoint, and I can tag it again by looking at it. Boom, boom. Basically, I can tell him to patrol the... Cancels the currently tagged waypoint in the pilot as a default patrol course around the current sector. So he'll patrol around Mars in this little area um, looking for enemies, which is actually kind of nice. Um, let's charge that hyper jump. Jump. There we go. Okay. Let's get landing on that. Speed up the time again. I do like they added that feature in memory and she can speed it up when there's no enemies around because I will admit in Bomber Crew it could get very boring waiting for your plane to get into range to land and then being allowed to speed up time once you got in range to land. Um, we've got a thousand credits, 500 research, Solar Justice was returned. No bonuses for returning. All of my crew members survived. They're now going to be getting leveled up. So we've got attack, defense, reactor boost, shield, replenish, focus fire, and focus fire. That's going to the next screen. Your unlocked ability. So for the captain, he got two abilities: attack and defense. I can either tell my captain to plot a course toward enemy fighters for more direct confrontation, or to plot a course that keeps the shields, the ship's strongest shields, facing the enemy. Um, what they don't tell you on this is with the defensive one, I haven't really looked into the attack one, but with defensive, it does increase your ship's base evasive maneuvers. So that means you're more likely to dodge shots a small amount. This one's a nice one when your engineer is in the actual engineering wing. He can boost the reactor, giving you more temporary power as long as he's in there. As soon as you remove him, this stops. Um, and this is obviously where the security officer is one of my favorites. Um, when she's at her station, she can charge this ability up. Once the ability's charged, it activates, and then it restores your shield. So let's say you had no shields. Boom, restored. And then obviously for our gunners, or weapons officers are called, we have the ability to focus fire and increase their accuracy up to 100%. And it's going to tell me, here is the light armor suit, so you can actually upgrade your guys, um, get them some armor. Let's jump over to the crew hall where they're at. And here's my people. 
Um, do you, you can do crew, different crew gear will have different properties such as resistance to damage, resistance to radiation, or improved mobility. I definitely like the mobility options for my crew. So like you can look at this, this is the full preset. This is the recommended build for it. So this is just basically armored up. Um, custom layout, you can actually like, oh, I want him to have the helmet or equip to everyone to have that helmet. And it's gonna tell you the cost to equip the doll. You can be like, oh, I like how, like you have the standard like Star Trek style look. Um, a bomber jacket with a Hawaiian shirt, just some overalls or light blue, an actual just military jumpsuit, and then a military shirt with some khaki pants. And then you have the actual armor that you can equip, and you can actually change the color of certain items, like the light armor suit, the jumpsuit, and then the uh, Star Trek shirt, which is what I'm going to call that. Um, you can also go in and actually customize them, name and everything. That's where I said, like, if you have, if you want to get your, see your name up in here, please let me know. I'm more than happy to let your name in there. Um, but we, obviously, we have some gloves and we have some boots. And I always like to go, because we've got the basic uh, armor kit, I will go to my security officer. I'll spend the 125 to equip it to her. And let's change her color to a green for the that. Uh, you really can't change the color of anything else. Um, you can also have them in storage. So, like, let's say I get an upgraded helmet or an upgraded armor vest, and I take this off of her. It's now in storage. That means someone else can equip it without having to pay for it. So. I like to do that, and then I like to put on my gunners. Let's make it white. I like to put on this armored vest, um, just because the gunners tend to get shot more than anything else. And then I like to put the gloves on everyone because it adds a base. Here's your armor. Adds a base five to armor doesn't affect mobility it, yeah it doesn't give anything to radiation and it doesn't give anything to like uh, surviving in a vacuum um, but just equipping that on them and everyone gets the gloves means that they now have five percent more resistance to actually getting hit by an energy blast or being attacked by enemy borders which is awesome well i hit the recruitment room i didn't mean to do this but this is where if let's say one of your crew members died you got to come down here and recruit them um, you can also, I did not notice this, you can import form from your bomber crew. Um, so if you played bomber crew on your computer, you can actually import them from over. Um, like we have Knox Far Fanfare, we have Clark, we have Marshall, and we have Richie. And then we have just new recruits. But anyway, let's jump on to the next mission. Um, so we can either investigate plasma activities, which is only going to give us 1,500 and 500, or we can do transport supplies, which is 2,000, 1,000. Now, this is very interesting. If you notice, there's this red line. Oh, let me go back. We've got a red line, and then we've got a blue line. I'm going to do this mission, and I'll show you what that means, because I found this to be very, very interesting. Yeah, i got to click on my pilot. Right. <sighs> Uh, before starting the mission, let's quickly go over some of the equipment on your ship. We have the equipment stored around your ship, the racks. Um, you can customize your ship's equipment racks between mission areas on the Athena Station, which we don't have the ability to until uh, after this mission. There are four types of equipment. So we have spacesuits, we have fire extinguishers, we have phase rifles, one here and one here, and then we also have med kits. We have three on the ship right now. Um, as the training here says, we've started a controlled fire at the back of the ship of your crew. Put it out. Select so like their engineer. Let's select that fire extinguisher. He's going to run over there, get it, and then we can click down here and extinguish all fires. And they're going to go ahead and extinguish all fires on the ship rather than have to manually select the fires, which is awesome. And now we can tell them to stow that. Occasionally, your engines may be become damaged. This can be cause them to leak radiation into your ship, harming your crew. Preparing, you like to send a crew member out to the ship. Make sure they equip the space before going out. 
We've marked an engine, engine as damaged. Let's try repairing it. So now I've got to select him. So now, now you see this green area of effect? If your person is not wearing a suit like this, which protects them from radiation, they will start taking damage over time, which sucks. Um, we're wearing what you need to send them to medbay, which is right here. Um, a feature I found out, the green circle that is around the medbay health bar, that is how much charge medbay has. Once that's gone, you can no longer heal with medbay. You now have to use other resources. Let's get them to come inside. It's going to have me just put them in here, but that means they're going to drop the space here, which isn't fun. See? Launched it right out there. And it's telling me we have phase rifles in case the enemies board your ship. We have med kits where in which you can revive dead crew members. Uh, we can continue our mission, but I want to go ahead and stow the spacesuits so that way it's nice and put up there rather than just floating around in the ship. As you can see, the health thing is now marked. And we have all this. So we can boost, which gives us a little bit more power for a short time. We also have the override. Uh, or overdrive. Overdrive the reactor making more units of power available for a short time. The reactor will leak radiation while this is active. Um, so that's no fun. We go to her, she has the replenish shields. And then we have defensive. Cancel currently tagged waypoints and face the strongest sh shields towards enemies. And switches to an offensive piling mode. We'll pilot, of course, toward enemy fighters. Uh, so yeah. Let's get you up here into that, because you're slow. Let's get you over here as well. Keeping my ships on. Now, let me go to my communications officer at two. So, this is where it says, so I have the fastest road over there I can go, which is to the Ashry Belt, where in which if you saw, it was those two red lines. That's what it means. It is only two jumps. Or I can take the blue path, which is the Earth Moon, and it's safe, so I can take the safe path, or I can take the quick path. We're going to jump over here to the quick path, because who dares wins? You know, got to risk it all. And the game does understand, like, oh, you're willing to take the, the fast route? Well, you are going to encounter more enemies. You're going to encounter harder enemies, and they definitely do not pull their punches. They... They will hurt. So we're ready to charge. Charge up. Drops this out of fast forward and jump. I do like that they made that really, really fast to charge up. Um, when you're in combat, so when we've got enemies incoming as it is now. Um, where are you, you little buggers? I'm trying to watch the radar down on the bottom right for where they're going to pop up. Enemies are still incoming. Enemies are still incoming. We're going to select attack. Oh, I saw them. There they are. There we go. We're now attacking them. Checking my radar to see if there's any more ships about. There are. They just spawned in. I like to mark them as well. Okay, we just took care of you. Let's go ahead... Don't need to focus you. Tanaki, you're in the back. Let's actually focus you. So now his aim accuracy is up to 100%. That means he's not going to miss a shot, which is absolutely amazing. So we just took care of him. Do I have any more units coming in to combat wise? Wait for my blip. No. So these are the last two. We took care of him. He's getting pelted. Get you. Focus fire as well. We have one more ship. Did not realize he was all the way up there. He just... Oh, we've got some smaller ships. And this is where my, like, I'm not paying attention enough to notice these little ships just popping out of nowhere uh, will get me killed. So, yeah, going into attack mode, really, I'm not seeing a bonus to it. Like, if I go into defensive... Give me 10%. And it didn't really affect my accuracy, which I would think the attack one would. It really hasn't done anything else. Defensive mode, I think, is the little bit better of the two. 
Um, because you're going to be making sure your shields, which is my back shield right now at 100%, my friend's the weak one, will always be facing towards them. So, all of them are destroyed, so we're going to go ahead, get that set up, go back to... Oh, I already am on my captain. So my shield down here is recharging. If I were to go on to my engineer and tell him to go jump on the engineering cabinet and take away a power from the gravity to put into shields, it would recharge faster. Oh, great. O2 decided to kick out. Every once in a while, as well, things will break down. It's not just, you know, them being destroyed. They just stop. So now I don't have any O2 on my ship, and people might start suffocating. I also like looking at the damage on the ship, or like these actually like working. I find it so fascinating, and like you can see little decals like this has been blasted off and burnt. Oh, they just they did wonderful on this game. I don't I don't want to say anything bad about it because it's actually a fun game. It's actually really well done. And I am enjoying it, and I want to show everyone else that, hey, this is a very fun game, and you should totally support running them, because there should be more games like this, because they offer just a unique challenge. So he's over there through this asteroid belt, and he's under attack. Now, we've got to have enemies incoming, as the music is telling us right there. So fun, fun. There's another group of enemies on my radar. No, it was just them. That's my objective. I'm like scanning with my eyes as well, just in case. Can I use your focus fire? I can. Let's get you focusing up. And why don't we get you focusing as well? You can't really shoot. Uh, pilot, get into defensive mode. Defensive. Let's not go on to actually attacking. My shields have failed, so the top of my ship is now weak. Oh, there we go. I saw them. Let's get them. So it's trying to put them below us, so the shields below us are going to take most of the hit, as well as the ones in the back. Um, which actually worked out very well. We killed them all very fast. Okay, so we now got all of them. This is where the fun part comes in. So we're now needing to go to the landing pad on the Desitir. And we gotta go through this asteroid belt. Now, the asteroids will hit your ship. They will damage your shield. Um, so a lot of times it's best to come in here and go, Hey, let's jump off you. Jump on that. Let's take gravity away because we're not gonna need it. Let's boost shields you can increase your shields engine your ship's engine so they have you know you dodge more shots but boopsie just bounced off took all that shield gone just poof, got another hit 20 20 left and we got away from the recharge yeah no it's like it's like no joke they just yeah land on the station They're going to take the package. We don't have to have anyone in there to, you know, extract or deposit, which is nice. Let's go ahead and launch. Um, let's go the fastest route, you know. And accelerate the time. Get through this asteroid. Look, here it comes! Oh, it missed! Sometimes you can just see them, like, being thrown at you. Like, thunk! <laughs> just bounces off. Oh, 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 oh! Ah, it missed. <gasps> thunk! <laughs> like, I've yet to have one actually do damage to the ship, but the fact is you don't want to be in, um... The asteroid and fighting the phasmids because that's just a bad plan. Uh, let's remove that shield and boost gravity. I'm gonna wait till he's done healing, um, just because he for some reason got smacked in the face with like a plasma bolt or something. 
just smacked him right in the face. It just is like, no! <laughs> Beat him down. Get you over into that gun. Charge. Do -do 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 -do. And engage. Warning! Increased enemy activity. Let's immediately get on defensive there. Let's get on to... Um, you, I need to tell me where the enemies are coming from. Boom, boom, boom. Let's go ahead and fight them. And then on my ship, let's go ahead. I might at one, at one point jump you off so I can charge my shields. Um... Oh, there's the next group coming in. I saw them. Those are little light fighters. Let's jump on to... Yep. You and you, I need to focus fire. So you're incredibly accurate and can take out those ships incredibly fast. Uh, I already have defensive going on. Okay, you're good. You blew up. You blew up. I saw them, another group of four coming in. We're still on defensive. I'm gonna have my front gunner jump off real fast. Get over to that. And now we're playing shields. Now you gotta sit here and wait for a second as she charges it up. See, it just takes a second. And then I'm already low. Boom. Instantly all shields back up. It's a little bit of a micromanage, but it's really nice to have and it's really nice to do that because then you can really help out your ship. Uh, man, those light fighters, they just rip into you. That, those are some of the most annoying ones. Uh, let's look at my radar. So let's suggest them right now. Come on, gunners. I know you can do your job. Yep, there we go. We got two of them. At least two more. Come on. Come on. Kind of sucks for her because her gun, she's on the bottom, so she can't do much. Come on, come on. There we go. Okay. You took care of it. Let's get her back onto her station. And her ability, the replenish shields, I've noticed, is, recharge, is one of the faster ones to recharge because these guys, their focus fire is still recharging. Oh, wow, I almost had my reactor get damaged. That would have been bad. I oh, love how the music is still going off as if I'm in combat. But we'll definitely call it after this mission once we get back. We'll go through everything that we've unlocked, and then I think we'll call that a mission. We've reached our destination, and now we need to land at the station. And accelerate. With my captain, you know, taking some actual damage, you know. Solar justice. Solar just took some damage. Um, supplies transported. Boom. Two thousand credits. A thousand research points. Boom. Up to two thousand research. Ooh, the Solar Justice has returned. Uh, normally, a bomber crew, if you actually made it back with the plane, you got a bonus. This one, not so much. Um, here's my guys. Fast forward. So, our communications level up. And they got the ability to request fighter support, which is absolutely fantastic. You call If you're in a sticky situation like that, you know, you've got a lot of enemies. Activate that ability. It's... Oh, it's nice. And so now we've got leveled up plasma cannons and we've got increased armor plating. So... Okay. 
but you can see we've completed three missions, zero crew members lost, 4,000 total earned credits, 2,000 research gained, zero ships lost, 10 jumps completed, 50 enemy ships destroyed, and zero boarders killed. But let's go to our spacecraft now that we can edit it. Boom. This is the spacecraft camera right here. You can uh, change the upgrade and upgrade the equipment on your ship. You can also customize the appearance and name your ship. Um, so we have the armor. This also has the feature where it's three flown missions and it costs 10500 this ship. It's like, it's expensive. Armor? This game, I love it. The fact that you don't have to worry about a weight. That's absolutely fantastic. Bomber crew, you did. And Bomber crew was a great game. Like, it was easy to manage the weight because... They kept up with the upgrades pretty fast, so, you know, you get, like, oh, this amazing gun, but you don't have the weight to carry it. But you also upgraded your engines, so now, now you got to install the upgraded engines. You're like, well, I can't do both right now because I, I, I'm budgeting money. Let me let me upgrade my engines and then upgrade my guns because it's kind of the path you have to take. But armor plate, just slap that on. Just everywhere. Just not a hindrance and the fact is sure it adds weird little like bumps to your ship but at the same time it makes them look a little bit cooler as well um it's just gonna add more survivability to your ship so once your shields are down it's just better um i'm still debating because what i did in my um little test um which in my test is the mission after this one and then I, which is just uh, like a little random mission. It's not even an actual campaign. I haven't got, I didn't get that far. Um, is I took these two auto cannons because they're definitely good against holes, but they're not good against um, shields and they can operate with power. And I slapped them where our plasma cannons are. And then I took these plasma cannons and slapped them where my auto cannons are. Because the auto cannons are on the side of the ship and the plasma cannons are not. But you can also see this does 55 damage a shot, this does 49. Yes, it does less damage to the hole, but I'm thinking I'm just going to slap on these plasma cannons here. And I have a feeling we're going to have different types of weapons. We're not going to have different just, like, we might have some hybrid weapons where in which they do um, ballistic and um, kinetic. Or we might even have a special kinetic weapon that fires extremely slow, but it'll probably pierce shields or... We'll have like a weapon that it just does shield damage. It will not damage um, the hole, but it just like wipes out the shield and makes its other shields recharge even slower or don't recharge at all. Um, I can definitely like this game. I can definitely see doing that, and I can see it actually would benefit from that because then it would add a little bit more strategy into it. Because you gotta figure this rear weapon, he can shoot anything in the rear basically and behind and in, above, but he can't shoot below. This front gun can shoot everything in front of it and below, but it cannot shoot above it. And these auto cannons, they kind of handle the spaces to the left and right, um, a little bit to the front, a little bit to the back. They can't, like, if the ship's directly in front of the back or front of the uh, in front, if the ship's directly um, in the front or in the back, they really can't hit them. Um, they can hit above and they can hit below, kind of, but if they're directly, they can't. And they've got, they can just control one side. And I can definitely, like, I know, like, right now, the weapons are all here. Like, you've got, I can have any type of weapon here that makes sense. But I can see maybe specifically having, like, this is a left auto cannon Or this is a right specialty auto cannon. Um, also, we're going to have, you can, engines, like, right now, my ship has a 30 maneuverability which I can definitely see that increasing for uh, escape. This is kind of funny. We have one escape pod right now. So if the ship ends up, I have to abandon. Only one of my people is going to survive. I can spend money, which is about 750 a piece per escape pod to add, you know, all the escape pods in. But that's it's a little bit pricey. You can also go ahead and edit the um, equipment racks right now. Like this only has one phase rifle. Well, let's say I don't want just a phase rifle there. Let's say... And why are you just scrolling up? Why are you doing this to me? Oh, I know why. There we go. My controller's plugged in. 
let's say I want the, you know, spacesuit and the phaser rifle, because that makes sense, because this is, this is the airlock. And then we have the suit, and we have two fire extinguishers here, which, that right there doesn't make sense to me. Why would you have two fire extinguishers there? I can understand, like, you know, a fire extinguisher and a med pack here. Um, that's definitely what I would choose, is that. And then where we've got just a single fire extinguisher here, I can definitely see, like, you know, a fire extinguisher and a spacesuit, because we technically already got the med pack and a phase rifle here. And then, let's see... In here, I'd probably change out that spacesuit to a med pack and phase rifle because I'm not going to lie when, and I've actually dealt with them, I've dealt with one pack of boarders, they will ignore the guy in this turret and run in here and they go straight for the reactor. Like, that is their primary objective is this reactor in here. So you're like, engineer, get off, grab that gun, shoot. Or, you know, you're running your security officer, which is heavily armored and slow as balls but has the most accuracy for shooting a phase rifle in the ship grab that phase rifle run in there and kill all those enemies uh, i also unlocked the training corridor and uh, this is where we can take our crew once they've hit a certain level um, to train secondary skills or increase their skills so i also found out like you can see their abilities and when they're gonna unlock them so like at level four Evasive piloting performs evasive maneuvers to reduce the chance of getting hit, which is one I want. Um, you've got the fast jump. Dr drastically increases the charging speed for hyperjump while enemies are present. Um, which, to let you know, if there are enemies present, present, so like the hyperdrive, it charges in like four seconds. Like that's that's incredibly fast. How could that be difficult if there's enemy presence? Well. The game balances that out. If there are enemies present, your captain can only charge the hyperdrive so fast. Like it'll take him, um, a la like two, like a minute thirty from when I checked it last. Like a minute thirty to minute forty-five. Um, I can't quite remember because you're basically a sitting duck for a minute forty-five because it deactivates. It takes all your power to charge the jump drive, so two of your guns aren't working. You have no shields. You have no engines. You do not dodge shots. You are literally just a sitting hunk of iron that has two turrets to rely on and if the enemy decides to sit either in the front uh, or behind you you cannot hurt them so it just doesn't make sense to do that so and then once they hit a certain level they'll be able to learn another uh, skill which I think I can actually check it in here if I were to pull them up yeah so at level six my captain the pilot, I should say, cap the, the captain, he'll be able to learn a secondary skill. Same as my comms, my security officer, my engineer, my weapons gunner, all of them, once they hit level 6 of this first skill, they'll be able to learn a secondary skill, and then the experience goes even slower. So, yeah. But, anyway, I want to thank you guys so much for coming out, and if you watched the entire video, please leave a like and comment and subscribe. That helps me out so much. And it really lets me know that you guys are out there watching me and, you know, you want to see me keep doing this because I do want to keep doing this. I want to keep making these videos. And, th and I'm not going to lie, this, the whole COVID-19 system has not been difficult for, it's been difficult for everyone. Um, it's been difficult for me and then I've got a lot of things I've been dealing with on my own that I'm not going to bother weighing you guys down with because you guys are just awesome. And just coming out and watching me and supporting me, that that means the world to me and i can't express that enough so please again just like comment subscribe and i will look forward to you guys in the next video i'm gonna try and get these out maybe once once everything starts settling down here on my end i'm gonna try and definitely get this to be an actual maybe once a day thing get a video up every day um that's my first goal and the more support you guys get from me the more uh, the more i'm gonna push towards getting that done and um, I don't want to put any pressure on you, so um, this is me, King Joe. Stay awesome.